Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joe Coffey here for PremierGuitar.com. We're at the LA Amp Show 2009. We're in the Brown Note room, and we're about to hear some cool tones from uh, Brown Note Amps and Mr. Pete Anderson. Uh, first of all, to talk about this new amp, I've got Moss here to tell me about it. What's up, man? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, man. What, what amp are we looking at here? Well, this is uh, probably our most popular amp. It's the D Light 2233. And uh, it's a convertible amp that will either run uh, 6V6s at 22 watts or 6L6s at 33 watts. I know I'm not the only one out there who has spent a lot of time with the tab for Please Please Baby and all these other songs. We've, uh, we've got Mr. Pete Anderson himself here to take us through this amp. Pete, how are you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Now, have you played this amp before? No, it's the first time. So we're going to kind of watch you dial into this for the first time. And uh, tell me about the guitar you're playing here. Uh, well, I've got a custom guitar with Reverend. And this isn't it, <laughs> but uh, but so I took advantage of some of the other stuff he had online, and I needed a dedicated slide guitar. So I I looked up what he had. He sent this to me, and uh, I got a shorter scale Gibson neck that I had bound and set up, and then Seymour stuffed it because I don't really like Filtrons, and he put humbuckers in here, and and I just created a little lift nut, and I've got flat wounds on it. So it's it's my dedicated slide guitar. Um, it's it's loosely tuned to open G with a capo on it. Um, and I heard his amps basically through you guys. I was a big deluxe fan in the, in the early days of my career. I started with one deluxe, and then as Dwight's career grew, I went to two deluxes. Then I started beefing up the deluxes to get a cleaner and cleaner sound and realized um, through reading, a, before I ever talked to Moss, that it was sort of loosely based you know, on a blackface deluxe. So it really perked my interest um, in listening to the stuff uh, in that a lot of people... Uh, are, are afraid to make an amp that, uh, I, I shouldn't say afraid, but I don't find a lot of clarity when they get into the second and third stages that an amp can do. And they totally dismiss the clean sound. Um, and, you know, when you're young and you're learning how to play, it's fun to have, you know, vox tone benders and distortion and stuff like that. But after a while, you start playing multiple interval licks, they're not going to work. And they're going to cave in on one another. So the interesting thing that I heard online was how, you know, the tones held together individually, but played simultaneously. It's a trip to hear you say that. Obviously with YouTube and the compression it's hard to get the right sound. Uh, so we're just doing our best to give you guys an idea when we go to NAMM shows, open convention floor, a lot of sound, or like uh, the LA and New York AMP shows, small hotel rooms, you know, it's not the best ideal situation for recording, but we're doing what we can to give you an idea. And, and like Pete said, from there, you can go on and uh, do your own uh, self-discovery. So let's, uh, let's listen to you uh, take us through this AMP, man. All right, well, I'm just getting started, so I don't know a lot about it. I think this this first thing we have is is where we bypass everything, and Moss can can help me. But uh, if this is where the preamp is, and once he told me about this, I was a big fan early in my career of preamp distortion versus speaker distortion, tube distortion, or distortion boxes. And for what I liked, I realized what I was really liking the sound of was preamp distortion. So this first thing that we that we sort of very quickly dialed up has is preamp distortion. As I mean even like this you can hear everything. And that I'm I'm sending a lot of signal into the amp. You know, I'm, I mean that's that's four notes. There's an octave. And these are pretty big strings. And that's pretty pretty nice for that I've got all the, the uh bass boost rolled off on this going to this. Multiple intervals there. Growl's kind of nice when you put two together. And then, this is, I, I've just, like I said, barely scratched the surface. And this is more, e a, another step up, but. Probably have to thin that. an octave. Tell me 
Tell me about your strategy for a slide capo technique. Uh, this is something I'm trying to get somebody to build for me, and uh, <clears throat> probably somebody will now build it, and I won't get credit for it. But <laughs> <laughs> in playing slide for so many years, um, the basic principle for me is your touch. So even if you're playing, you know, I got inspired by Dwayne Allman. I'm that old that, uh, you know, I played a regular tuning slide on a regular guitar. And if you play it enough, you get your touch, which is how you touch the strings. You don't really want to get the fret rattle. <clears throat> but going from instrument to instrument uh, and not playing like if I, if in the course of a night, I might only play slide on two or three things. So I'm not maintaining my touch. And I'm certainly not maintaining my touch on the number one instrument that's my finger style instrument. So in putting a slide guitar together, I realized that once you start capoing or changing anything, you're changing the action. So you're playing a guitar and instantly you oh this is I love how it is and then you put a capo on it you've changed the action so I started thinking well how could I sort of keep the action high and uh, and and do a capo so I started with a little mini Allen wrench the free things they give you with guitars uh, and that was that was uh, pretty heinous because it was uh, an octagon and it would really see tar the strings then I went to Home Depot and I found this rod of, uh, of copper or I mean brass and I sort of cut that up so that's the stage I'm in um, and just a, a mini plug because I do work with Planet Waves and Diodario this is that that Ned Steinberger capo and it's it's a monster it really works it's like a zero nut and I just keep the strings very high and then I started experimenting with uh, with flat wound strings in that I would want to be able to have a clean sound and then be able to grind when I do you know when I put a, a single note let's go back to the the first thing <laughs> And that's that's pretty clean, right? And then if I just want to, so I didn't do anything. So what I do have is at least step one with the flat wounds is I've got no grind, so I can have I can make a sweet cleaner sound. And then if I want to grind it, I can add an interval or depending on how I set the amp up. So that's sort of the motivation behind it. Hey Moss, what's it like hearing a Pete Anderson play this amp? Oh, that's a, it's a great treat. You know, he's really pulling the tone out of it. Couldn't ask for a better demo. <laughs> Pete, I understand there's a killer new album in the works. Tell me about it. Yes, it comes out October 20th. It's called Even Things Up. That's what happens when you've been married more than a couple times. You want to even things up. Sorry, ladies. They need, there's no ladies here. What am I looking around for? This is a testosterone show. Um, but this thing's going to be old school, right? Yeah, it's a blues trio. It's an organ trio, kicking organ bass, uh, key bass. Uh, it's what I'll probably be doing, hopefully, as long as I stay healthy. You know, just, I'm going to be hitting the road, uh, doing King of the Blues for um, the Guitar Center. They've, uh, it's that big guitar contest, so that's at the House of Blues. Uh, uh, November 12th, a Thursday night, we'll be, I'll be uh, opening the show and then backing the, the contestants. It's like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in prizes. I tried to enter but I, they said I couldn't. <laughs> it's like, could I win the prizes? <laughs> so uh, it's very exciting. It's the third year we've had it. Joe Bonamassa's is playing. Um, it's going to be a blowout. It'll be sold out. It's going to be really, really rocking. we we'll try to get Moss to throw some amps up on stage and give him a little mojo there and see what we can do. Um, and then I'll be hitting the road. So I'll be out there. My website is, uh, is littledogrecords.com and uh, peteanderson.com. Um, just did a really cool thing with my buddy from Line 6, who they've supported me for years with pods. And uh, yeah, they had the Spider 4, so they, I dialed in four sounds, uh, a telly sound, a slide sound. I, di I dialed in all the sounds but a brown note, because they couldn't get that one. <laughs> so and what's they don't have brown note inside, <laughs> inside the, the little guys in there going, what's brown note? When you <laughs> dial it up, bring me the brown note. So I'm like, who's brown note? What is it? Which one is it? We don't have it. Like, well, sorry. But right it, sound, it sounded really good. So I'll be on there, too, if you look for me. Cool, man. Yeah. We'll keep an eye out. Also, uh, the, the website for Brown Note. Brownnote.net. All right. And, P, why don't you take us out? I'm Joe Coffey. You're watching PremierGuitar.com. Mm -hmm.